So the first thing that I'm going to start is probably my risotto. Um, and here is the Anson Mills. And you can kind of smell it has such a nice mm -hmm. kind of nutty um, flavor. Yeah. And I'm just going to come right over here. Um, and I'm going to start with just a little bit of blended oil. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw in my rice. And I'm just going to throw in about a cup of rice. Um, and we're just going to kind of toast that up nicely. This is a very important step with risotto. Yes, it really brings out that night, nutty flavor mm -hmm. and gets the aroma of the rice going. Next to this, we're going to add some shallots. Okay. Uh, and I love to put a little bit of garlic in there. Um, so I'm just going to grab one of these cloves. This is, uh, since we have a, a farm to table American restaurant, mm -hmm. I really won't, I try never to, to serve any other rice as risotto in my restaurant, you know, just to stick with domestic and, and something mm -hmm. that I'm really proud of uh, that comes from a really great farming region. I love that. And the appearance of this rice is much different than like an arborio. It's not as fat. Nope, it's not as fat. And they actually, sometimes when um, they use like a colonial pound, they actually process it by hand. Really? Um, so occasionally the grains break up even smaller. So they actually have another product, which is Carolina rice grits. And it's just okay. smaller grains that didn't quite make it. Okay. Uh, all right. So next, I'm just going to add a little bit of white wine. Okay. Um, and then, so now I'm going to go ahead. I have some warm mushroom stock here. Mm, I can smell this. It smells fabulous. And I'm just going to slowly start adding this. Mm -hmm. And basically, I, I follow the traditional risotto method, kind of adding in thirds. Okay. Um, and so that's going to be our first start. So I'm just going to turn this down. We're going to kind of stir it as much as we can. Um, so now, while we're doing this, uh, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to add a little bit of blended oil to this guy. All right. And we're going to start sauteing a little bit of mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms do we have? So we have morels. Um, these ones were foraged from the Pacific Northwest. Nice. Um, and they're, they're pretty nice, mm -hmm. super expensive. Um, but usually, if you wait a couple weeks, the market gets a little saturated with it and it comes down in price. It's good to know. It is. We, we actually have um, some of the best morels that I've ever seen or tasted in my life were from Pennsylvania. Really? So a lot of people don't know that, but we do have some really great morels that grow Fantastic. local. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this down just a notch because we have some really nice color here. And Nicole, if you could just give that a stir. Yeah. We get looking a little we dry. Add a little more liquid in it. Yep. So go ahead and add maybe two ladles. What's the season for morels? Because they have a small window. It is a small window. It starts in the spring. You know, you start seeing them, I think, this year as early, you know, late March. Mm -hmm. uh, and then April, they really start to come around. Okay. Uh, and typically, they usually get into May. Um, it's one of those things I always am so busy cooking, cooking. I'm ordering, ordering, and then someone's like, oh, they're gone. They're gone. They, yeah, That's they just it. kind of, <laughs> kind of miss it. Have to wait till next year. Yeah. Um, so I have those in. You can see the moisture that's kind of come out of there. Mm -hmm. um, and now the pan's getting just a touch dry. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just add a little bit of salt. And what that does is it pulls some of the, the natural juices from the morels out. And so nice we're, tip. we're just going to cook these until we're starting to get some nice golden edges. Mm -hmm. They cook pretty quickly. You can smell that there's really nothing like it. Um, it's kind of that really earthy, nutty aroma, yeah. which goes really nice with the rice. So Definitely. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do to, to keep these guys um, from overcooking, and it's kind of neat, you can use your vegetables, since they all have moisture uh, and they're going to cool down the pan, we can go ahead and cut up some of these ramps and throw it right in, and then that'll kind of keep our mushrooms from overcooking. Um, so here, these are the ramps, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically almost like a wild leek, or a lot of times you hear wild garlic. And I, I think for chefs, uh, the home cooks probably are, are starting to hear more about them, mm -hmm. uh, but they're highly coveted by chefs. I try to get in 40 or 50 pounds as soon as I can and pickle them. Um, the greens are actually really great. All right, so we're going to go ahead. And I just like to use a little bit of the greens for mm -hmm. this dish. All right, so this is looking very, very nice. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is for the garnish for the rice here, we can kind of see the rice is cooking nicely. One of the, the, the things about cooking risotto or even this rice is you can see how it's getting translucent around the edges. Yeah. Um, and the nucleus is still solid and, and opaque. Um, well, as the rice cooks, that translucence gets down and you're going to see the center mm -hmm. is still going to have almost that small seed. 
and you don't want to overcook it. Right. So you still want a little bit of that tooth there. Uh, and I actually find that the Carolina rice is a little bit hardier and a little bit harder to overcook. Um, we like that. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to go ahead and add one more ladle to this. Sure. I'm going to come over here and grab Fifteen um, minutes. some of this garnish. Um, and so what I have here is some guanciale. Mm -hmm. um, and these are some Sea Island red peas, which is an also, also an Anson Mills product. These were the original peas that they used in the Reezy Peasy. Um, so kind of what we've done, I've just cooked these down in mushroom stock and I did throw in a little bit of kale. Um, the guanciale is actually um, a bacon made from pork jowls. Um, and it was big in Roman times and has, has kind of lost its, it just kind of disappeared. You're starting to see a resurgence of a it with more. all of the charcuterie and, mm -hmm. um, and it's actually, the recipe was given to me by my friend and I kept losing it. So this is actually the recipe for our guanciale really? uh, <laughs> that I have tattooed on my arm. <laughs> Never lose it yeah. now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of guanciale, guanciale to this. Um, and it really is, it's such a nice, if you want to take a taste. Absolutely. It's, it's, and you've uh, already kind of rendered this down. Yeah, this has already been rendered down. It does have a lot of fat mm -hmm. and most of the fat just kind of renders out. So yummy. All right. So and you can start to smell these flavors kind of blending together and, and the ramps and, mm -hmm. and the morels and kind of the earthiness of these peas. So it's nice now we've kind of sauteed all this stuff together. Um, and this we will just go ahead and add right to our risotto. Um, when it's ready. Great. All right, so we're gonna check the rice. And we can even see, um, you know, we still have some nice texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that ladle one more time. We're gonna add one more spoonful there. You wanna cook your risotto over a fairly low flame? You know, I usually do it medium. I've kind of turned it down a little bit now just because mm -hmm. we're, you know, stepping around. Sure. But usually a medium flame is kind of the best, best okay. way to do it. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt to it. One of the things that um, is nice is if you get the salt in early, it gets absorbed through the entire sure. grain of rice, um, which lends to a really great flavor. Just wanna season in layers throughout yes. the whole cooking process. Yes. And do you usually have salt in your stock or do you keep that pretty unsalted? You know, I keep it pretty unsalted mm -hmm. just in case. Sure. Um, but, and then typically whenever I, I start a dish, I try to get the amount of salt in that I think it's gonna need, mm -hmm. um, just so it does get distributed right. evenly. And then you can always add a little bit of finishing touches. Yes. All right, so I am gonna go ahead and add our garnish to this. And you know what? Nice. The one thing that I almost forgot is, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of these peas right into here, all right? Awesome. And they're so sweet, they're gonna blanch up really nicely. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and drop our garnish right in. Mm. So much flavor in there. Oh, you can just, just smell it. Nice. All right, I like to just take a little bit of mint and just do a real quick chiffonade on it. Any particular kind of mint that you like? Spearmint, peppermint? I think sometimes spearmint and, and peppermint, peppermint can be a little bit uh, too strong. Okay. Um, and this is just your normal, just regular, regular mint. mint. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll go ahead and mix that in. Um, and now I am gonna add just a touch of cream. And I'm talking about a tablespoon or two. Okay. Um, and that'll just kind of round it out, kind of help blend those flavors together. And then what I like to do is add a little bit of butter mm -hmm. um, and sticking more with the risotto uh, method, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Of course, it's essential. Yes, <laughs> and just a splash of truffle oil. Mm. A little bit of lemon juice. Oh, well, that's interesting, you don't yeah. see that too much to finish. You know, I actually really love when uh, my risotto has a little lemony flavor mm -hmm. to it. Typically we'll use the lemon to wake dishes up. Mm -hmm. This is the one dish where I actually like to have a little bit of that citrus and the little lemon where you can actually taste it. Nice. So once I add all that stuff in there, I'm done. I pretty much take it off the heat. 